King James and very glad to be able to welcome all of you who are here with us within the church and also everyone who is joining us online. Together we make a great company of the saints. I'm also aware that we most weeks have new people who join us online and I know we have some new folks with us here today in the church and that is also a source of great delight to welcome people into the worship of God and what a great day to do that because today is the feast of St. Mary the Virgin. For those of you who are here in the church along with your bulletin you got a little card reminding you of some of the guidelines that we need to maintain for worship in the church. I think the one that is perhaps most confounding for New Yorkers who like to keep things moving along is that when it comes time for communion, we ask you to receive at the communion station that is on the same side as your pew. And I say that's confounding for New Yorkers because sometimes the other station won't have it anyone. That's okay, we want you to go to the station on the same side as your pew, whether it's for communion or for a pun tactless blessing. Uh, that means that people are not crossing around uh, one another. And that's actually a really good safety precaution that we have. But again, we are delighted that everyone is here and delighted to welcome as well folks from the eight o'clock, which was rained out in Central Park. So as we move fully into our worship, let us pray. O oh God, who didst wonderfully create and yet more wonderfully restore the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity. Thy Son, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Spirit. And let us be with you now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, on whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who has taken to thyself the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of thy incarnate Son, grant that we who have been redeemed by his blood may share with her the glory of thy eternal kingdom. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth in thee, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to thee, O Lord. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. A few summers ago, I made a visit to some lifelong family friends who live just outside of Boston. Tom and Janice are two of the best people I know. And because they've been in my life since I was about five, seeing them always feels like a step back in time, but in the best kind of way. Over the years, we've had many joy-filled visits but this weekend in particular was extra special. As luck would have it, my travel plans overlapped with the day their grandson was to be baptized, an occasion I'm glad to say I had the privilege to attend. The service itself was pretty intimate. Held on a sleepy summer Saturday, we pretty much had the space to ourselves as one by one folks made their way inside the parish doors. When it came time for the baptism to begin, the priest asked all the family and loved ones to gather in a big circle around the font in the back of the church. It was a beautiful moment. I looked around at the faces of the parents and the grandparents and the aunts and uncles and everyone who was there. They were so happy. And even though I was one of the only people there who wasn't a blood relative of this child, I couldn't help but smile because my presence in the midst of this moment made me feel like one of the family. I was awash with the promise of new life and a moment of witness to the inbreaking of God's kingdom. Extending the joy we all carried from the font, after the baptism, Tom and Janice invited everyone back to their house for a festive summer party. There was good food and cake and a lot of love shared. However, the reason I'm telling this story is because at that party, I met someone who stands out in my memory as one of the few truly holy people I have had the privilege to meet. To put it one way, her soul magnified the Lord. Her spirit exalted. It rejoiced in God the Savior. 
Though Hollywood sometimes has a tendency to portray nuns as strict or harsh, not once in my life have I met a woman religious who fit that description, and Sister Maxine is no exception. While much could be said about her life and her journey, it bears mentioning that the reason she was at Tom and Janice's house celebrating the baptism of their grandson was that her connection to the family went back quite a bit. You see, when Tom was in high school, Sister Maxine was his chemistry teacher. And through her ministry, and though her ministry quickly moved beyond teaching to include a great many things, Tom and Sister Maxine stayed in touch and formed a relationship that would stand even decades later. In a conversation shared amidst Tom and Janice's backyard baptism bash, what I eventually learned is that Sister Maxine has made a lifetime out of lifting up the lowly and filling the hungry with good things. As our exchange went on, I became more and more amazed by the depth of her compassion and the beauty of her story, a tale of tenderness and unwavering care that she relayed to me without an ounce of ego. How do you do it? I wondered. How do you keep going? How do you love so fiercely without the danger of burning out? In words I'll never forget, Sister Maxine responded, It is good, and it is right, for us to move towards our neighbors with reverence, to move towards God's people as if they are tabernacles who contain the very presence of Christ, because they are, and they do. Yet it is also good and right for us to become acquainted with our limits and to know the work that is God's alone to make new. However, she said, what I want you to know and to hold on to is that in the chasm that exists between what we can do and what God can do, there is a bridge. And when the world seems too disfigured from the way we know it ought to be, our job as Christians is to stand at the very top of that bridge and pray and lament and sing our praise to the resurrected Christ who promises a new heaven and a new earth. Beloved in Christ, as we come together to celebrate the feast of St. Mary, who is the Theotokos, the God-bearer, the mother of Christ, it is worth pondering the polarities in Mary's song. These 10 verses lifted from Luke's gospel form the words to a hymn that Mary sings to her cousin Elizabeth when she recognizes her as the mother of the Lord. As a marginalized person living in a land that is occupied by the military of a foreign power, Mary knew what it meant to feel lowly and to navigate the dangerous fractures of a broken world. And yet, even though there is a chasm that exists between the world as she knows it and the promise God has made, she climbs to the very top of the bridge that crosses the void between those two places, and she sings. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. In the words of Andrew Purvis, Mary's inward knowledge of the good work God has done and continues in her, causes her to worship. The lyrics of her life name a profound reversal that is God's to bring about. What she sings is a resurrection of hope, a message that has particular resonance for the lowly, for those who hunger for good things. And as I hope to illustrate with the story I began with, I think Sister Maxine is among the people who very much knows what it means to live by Mary's example, because she is intimately familiar with the limits of her mortal body. And yet that doesn't stop her from loving fiercely, joining her hands to the work of God. 
On this day that shines a light on the downtrodden and the marginalized, I think it is well for us to remember that we are called to be people of action who sing and march and work for the coming of God's kingdom. And though there are sure to be moments when we too find ourselves rudely confronted with uncontrollable realities, when we are tempted to give up, the thing we can always do is climb to the top of that same bridge, singing Mary's song in fervent prayer as we remember the marginalized places in our world and try once again to reorient our hope and our living to the reversal the scriptures have promised. However, against the backdrop of fearsome challenges, what cannot be missed, what cannot be missed is the joy that radiates across these verses. As Tricia Centerfit notes, Mary sings because she has new life in her. While there is no doubt that Mary's vocation is greater than any calling we could ever aspire to, it shares an important connection to the life every Christian is beckoned towards. In the same way that Mary has sung of new life across the ages, so too we must also sing, because that is precisely what it means to be baptized. As disciples of Jesus, we are called each and every day to create a choir that sings a resurrection hope. In the following of our crucified and risen Lord, we are instructed in the present time in the here and now of our lives, to call daily upon ourselves and all whom we meet to bring the locations of our living into a better alignment with the world as it ought to be. In short, the task to which we are set upon is to magnify the Lord. Dear friends, as we remember Mary's message, and celebration of this feast. My hope for each of us this day is that we will carry God's promise of new life with a deep abiding joy, so much so that it radiates forth in all that we do. And on those days when we feel limited in our ability to create meaningful change, I hope that we will make our way to the top of that never failing bridge that spans the distance between our want for something better and the promise that is longed for. And in that spot, I hope we will find the courage to pray and lament and sing our praise to the resurrected Christ so that we can return from our worship, ready to once again be a people who walk beside the marginalized and the lowly in search of a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Father, we pray for thy holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of thy church may truly and humbly serve thee. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Andrew, Alan, and Mary, our bishops in New York, for the clergy of this parish, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for the leaders of our city, state, and nation, and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do thy will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in thy sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to Rita Rocaforte and all the departed eternal rest. We praise thee for thy saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, we pray for our nation in a time of great distress. We pray that you bind up our wounds and give us love for one another. We pray that you give us grace to confess the sins of racism and police brutality that harm our sisters and brothers. We pray that you strengthen all who march peacefully for justice and who work tirelessly on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. Give us in all things the spirit of Jesus and the grace to walk in his ways. Almighty and everlasting God, whose hand made Mary magnify thy name and rejoiced in thy saving love, trusting in that same love, we ask all these our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and an institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same, Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. In union, dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may ever be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I pray you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Oh, let nothing ever separate me from you. Let me live and die in your love. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.